Columbus feeler, Don Graff. Zivarichim goes out as well for the Eagles. Now, was that last one a tie-up? Yeah, they just changed the arrow over. Oh, piggyback ride right there by Rayon. Got to stay down. Comer will pick up the foul. Number two on the point guard for the Eagles. I'm not quite sure. It looked like James Rayhan was going to go up. Brett Comer got caught in between. That's a useless foul right there. Stay on your feet. Yep. And very rarely do guys block jump shots. Rayon out to Tampley. Back to Rayon in the corner. And Tampley, a little two man game on the perimeter. The three won't go. Picked up by Brown. Bill Gallup and Comer will try to create. And Brown will work on Rayon. Hustling his way inside with a foul. Forcing the issue and playing with three fouls. And Rayon picks up number one. And you like the fact bringing the ball up the floor. You had. You had Brown as well as Homer, eyes up, looking to see who's running with him, looking forward. Tell you what's interesting, Comer, and then we saw what Veradale did off the bench with Brown on the bench with those three fouls. Now, with under 10 minutes left, it's almost like, okay, big fella, we, we held the test of time, we got the lead, bring us home. And I think we'll see a little bit more of that aggressiveness from Sherwood Brown remaining parts of this game who no one recruited out of high school he was left out there and so many players like that absolutely there, so that slipped through the cracks that you know for whatever reason you know they're not on the radar of some of these big programs or even mid-major and those are the guys who are so refreshing because they appreciate where they are yeah Thames. Thompson is back in on top. He'll be the part of the defense. A switch on D. Feeler now is on Thames. Take the outside. This is over Comer. And the rebound just down by Thompson. I'll tell you what, two rush shots there by Chase Tapley on back-to-back -back possessions. You know, those are kind of the hero shots you're trying to make to tie it up, but you got to work. Oh, Brown with a three. And that was a long one. He gives him a six-point advantage. Brown with 13 for Florida Gulf Coast. And that's why you got to work, because you can't expect Florida Gulf Coast to, like, rest on their laurels. They keep coming at you. Nine to play. Over the screen, things going right into a bunch of blue jerseys, and it was knocked away by McKnight and picked up by Thompson and Comer. What is wrong with a little jump stop right there in the paint and a short jump stop? Comer with it. Tapley will defend. Oh, no, he did. Once again, he's just given Florida Gulf Coast their biggest lead tonight of eight. Tapley will try to defend. Right, right. As they were going inside and Shepard was driving. Well, what can Brown do for you? Sherwood Brown saddled with three fouls, comes off the bench, knocks down his first shot, and Brett Comer. Uh-oh. Chase Tapley, he puts him in the dizzy machine right there. Here's Shepard at the free throw line. For the Aztecs. Shepard, a five-star recruit. Well, the winner here will take on... Billy Donovan's Gators of Florida. Wouldn't that be something if we had Florida oh Gulf goodness. Coast against the Big Brother Florida Gator program? Almost for the Florida State Championship. <laughs> hey, now remember, th this Florida Gulf Coast team is not in awe of anyone. They beat Miami in Miami, went to Iowa State and lost. They have played before back in 2008. They didn't have to play here in the half. Well, Andy Enfield will tell you they played Duke and Cameron, yeah, yeah. and they outscored Duke 34 out of 40 minutes. It was just the other six that killed them. <laughs> Here's McKnight. Shoves it into Brown. No call. And to the result. And an 8 nothing run since Brown came off the bench and back into the game. you got to pay attention to detail if you're San Diego State. You can't risk flops. you got to make free throws down the stretch. If you can't connect on those little things, you're lost. Well, I'll tell you what, it's time for Jamal Franklin. Very much the same way Sherwood Brown has come in and made an imprint. It's time for Jamal Franklin to take reins of his team. Tampley can't get it. Here comes Brown. Chased by Franklin. 
meets the double. And back to Coleman. Seven and a half to play in the Aztecs on defense down by ten. Palmer now playing with far more swagger here in the second half. And the foul goes on Rahan for the second time as Steve Fisher yells out there at his Aztecs. But Brown has been spectacular off the bench, concocting one terrific shot after another. All a part of this improbable story. The 15 seed trying to make tournament history tonight in Philadelphia. San Diego State scoreless the last 418 and Florida Gulf Coast Lewis Johnson on a 10-2 run in terms of points off turnovers very effective tonight. Absolutely and a few moments ago we were noticing a shoe change for Jamal Franklin. We were talking uh, earlier in this uh, in this region about his interesting shoes but he switched them now he has on a different pair. Apparently he stepped on someone's shoe in one of the plays has a slight tear and so the shoe changes just be because of that. Everything else seems to be all right for Jamal Franklin now. <laughs> well, what were they called? They were the LeBron James first edition wheat something. Hopefully there's a second edition. If you're going <laughs> to step on somebody's foot and they tear. Homer with the miss. Here comes Tapley knifing his way through another turnover. It's picked up by Brown. Trying to do far too much right now. So that tells you San Diego State feeling the pressure. Brown with 17 and Florida Gulf Coast, the 15 seed on top by their largest margin tonight. So here, here's the problem because Florida Gulf Coast, they can just play free where all the pressure is on San Diego State. Rayon with the miss, Faraday with the volleyball. Here comes Comer. They've got numbers. The trailer Faraday for three. Picked up inside by Rayhan of the Aztecs. At that time, like yeah. a great shooter, he knew it wasn't going. As soon as it left his hand, so it blew for the offensive rebound. Just Tampa yeah. can't get it to go. A little early for these quick shots and threes for San Diego State, man. That's the pressure. Pressure's going to drop on them pretty soon. They need, instead of trying to do it individually, they need to pull together. Well, I would say that Coach Andy Enfield is going to run some time off and run their offense, but we saw against Georgetown, they didn't care about time and score. Franklin holds him. Feeler right there. And Franklin will pick up the personal foul. We're well, going to take a look right here. Franklin, there's no joke right here. He got his hand caught up. He said, well, I might as well give it a shot. We get the ball. Andy Enfield, you see him in the background calling for a flavor of one. <laughs> that's, that's called begging. That's what we call that. Go, that's, that's a little too much there, Coach Enfield. Tell you what, both teams have laid it on the line here tonight for a chance to move on to the Sweet 16. Feeler to Comer. Comer is 4 13, firing away. Rayhan right there to Thompson by Franklin for two. Uh. Now, for all you kids that are watching this game, that was a textbook move by Bernard Thompson. Show and go. They had a little tie-up right there on this 12 to nothing run by 15th seed Florida Gulf Coast and celebrate 75 years of March Madness by voting for your all-time players, your all-time teams, and all-time moments of the NCAA tournament. Vote now at NCAA.com slash March Madness. We may have one of those moments tonight. Because as we've said, if you're just joining us, a 15 seed has never advanced to the Sweet 16. But that kid tonight has lit the fuse in the second half for the Eagles. I like the move here. Comer picked up his third. The crowd on their feet. Five and a half to play. Fans, a reminder, the Sweet 16 begins Thursday with the Infinity NCAA tip-off on TBS at 6 p.m., followed by doubleheaders on CBS and TBS. San Diego State, 
scoreless the last 10 possessions. They are 0 7 from the floor with three turnovers. I'll tell you, San Diego State in serious trouble right now. And the only way they can get out of it is as a group. And for this half, they're 7 of 21, only 33%. Feeler not to the way. Thompson will take it off to Veradell and put in by Thompson. They're going to run him out of the gym here. It's a 14 0 run for FGCU. And when you think of March Madness and the underdog, you think of Florida Gulf Coast. Because these kids are out here just having fun. Franklin with the three, another miss. Brown will go the other way. Well, you were talking about body language a little bit earlier on. I totally agree. The body language is all now weird looking for, for San Diego State. Down they are. And that's an issue for Steve Fisher. He's got to find a way to knock his team out of the doldrums, have them execute better than they have. You cannot get back in the game with one pass and one shot. Unless you're making them, of course, which they're not. Feeler. Touch the lane. That will go in. Everything they're throwing up is going down. And there's no surprise in that shot there by Chase Feeler. Yesterday at practice, 20 minutes for the bigs. They work on that very shot right there between him and McKnight. Another steal. Thompson with trailers. And a foul. That will go on Xavier Thames of the Aztecs. And you can tell the wheels are falling off the San Diego State because their strength is playing defense. And right now, they're playing defense like a sieve. Sixteen nothing run. And it looks like Jamal Franklin is urging and pleading with his guys to step up the, their effort. Now we saw a couple nights ago, Florida Gulf Coast became the seventh 15 seed to win a tournament game. And tonight with a chance to become the first 15 seed in the history of this tournament to advance to the Sweet 16. And if you take a look at the players that have been responsible for it, they've all had a hand in it. That kid has come off the bench to hit threes. But Comer, Agent Zero, that, that guy <laughs> has had his fingerprints on this game. Well, I'll tell you what, when you use objective numbers that define throughout the season if you massage them long enough you can have them say anything and right now the mountain west which was rated number one in rpi as a conference they're about to lose their sole remaining representative here in the third round james is inside of over two defenders for the eagles he puts it through with under four to play that's why you don't use a great deal of the objective when you're judging teams and how they're going to compete more. McKnight from Comer. Seven for McKnight. But Comer's passing has been terrific. He's got 12 assists tonight. He had 10 the other night. And Templey with a three. And that's right down the hatch. I'm going to tell you what. Tell us what, Lynn. Kids are going to be saying after this game, yes. I want to fly like an eagle. That's <laughs> what they've been doing. <laughs>《by Comer, that guy right there who is the A Sun, the Atlantic Sun Player of the Year. A walk on is not working with a scholarship for this team. The senior from Orlando, Sherwin Brown. A lot of guys have had their name over various plays tonight, and even foul trouble did not get Brown out of his game, as it turns out for the Eagles. And remember when he came back in, I was curious to see did he stay engaged? You know, there's a lot of times, a lot of these players, sometimes they'll go south because their number is at home. And there he is again, Brett Comer, a season-high 13 assists for the Eagles. In a town which has an NFL team called the Eagles, the visiting Eagles have been terrific. Rehan with a three for San Diego State. Three to play now, and the clock ticking here in the second half. Bernard Thompson. Tapley will defend. For the second half of these two games against Georgetown on Friday and against San Diego State tonight have been remarkable. That's because this is this team is for real. Hey, no question about it. And they bring their best when the pressure is on. 
Bombers pit popping right there by Thames. Oh, oh, and that was a nice handoff to the trailer. Tapley. Tapley picks up his 14th point for the Aztecs. Two and a half to play. Well, the other night, they got a 19-point lead on Georgetown. It was whittled down a little bit, but they held on. But the one trademark of Florida Gulf Coast has been how loose they are. <laughs> Eagles <laughs> flying, kicking up their heels. Looks like Cinderella is going to dance for yet another night in the NCAA tournament. Gumbel in New York with a tournament update over on True TV in Kansas City. Marshall Henderson of Ole Miss loading up. Photon torpedoes, long range three. Ole Miss trails LaSalle by two at halftime, 40 to 38. The winner gets Wichita State in the Sweet 16. Kevin? Yep, they'll be up there taking on Wichita State. Other part of that is Arizona, Ohio State, and now the degree. Two more moment of the game. When Sherwood Brown re entered the game in the second half with 11 minutes 30 left on the clock. The Eagles went on a 17-0 run. So now, all you Philadelphia fans, just to say, that's how Eagles are supposed to play. <laughs> just a little shot. Football and shot his off. name is Reggie Miller. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I've had my run-ins with Sixers fans throughout my days. And Nick fans and uh, yeah, Washington Husky fans. <laughs> running down the list. At the free throw line is Bernard Thompson, sophomore from Conyers, Georgia. 20 points you, tonight. I tell you what, the other telling thing was how San Diego State, once again, instead of banging together, was about every man for himself. And ultimately, they wound up turning the ball over even more. 14 turnovers, Florida Gulf Coast is 20 points off those turnovers. Nice touch in the second half. It's shot 40%. Here they come. Four on one. Brown. Thompson and they're gonna eat some time. I am shocked right now because we saw yesterday that was an alley-oop to Chase Wheeler. But you know what the difference is Georgetown was making a run right. and you needed to continue to score. San Diego State sees the handwriting on the wall. They just about given up. Yeah, they are one more body blow. They're going down for good here. Eagles have shot 56% here in the second half. Thompson up three. And corralled by the Aztecs and Franklin with a minute and a half to play. Thames is looking inside, and that goes astray. Comer will check back in. Comer with 13 assists tonight. And that is a career high at 10 against Georgetown on Friday. Murray will check out. Fifteen point lead, 131 to go. That's the player of the year in the conference of the East Sun Sherwood Brown. There's Comer who has been magnificent, Paradell off the bench and hitting threes when Brown was in foul trouble and a little bit cold to begin the game. They've all had a hand in this tonight. And a minute 31 away from history. We've had 11 seeds advance to the Sweet 16. LSU, VCU, George Mason, but never a 15. Go inside. And look like Field will pick up the second personal foul for Florida Gulf Coast. And Andy Infield is livid right now at Chase Feeler. Very lazy pass after regaining the basketball when he threw it in. And that's what he's upset about. You, you've got to take care of the basketball. I know there's only a minute 27 left in this game, but if you're going to be moving on, you got to build better habits. That's right. That's exactly right. You can't take your foot off the pedal. Land of the line for the Aztecs. Well, it wasn't by a lack of effort by these Aztecs. Uh, I think they, them, along with everyone in this building and around the country, have just been caught up with Florida Gulf Coast fever. 
I, I agree with you, Reds. And you know what? Many times you have these kind of upsets, so-called upsets, and people will say, Thompson. I didn't know he had that kind of hop. Didn't I tell you? You get knocked out by their athleticism. But going back to the point I made, I was trying to make, many times people say, well, if these two teams played ten times, the, the favorite would win seven, eight times. This is just a fluke. This is no fluke, folks. This team is good. Very good. It was interesting. I was talking right before half with Coach John Thompson, and he called me over and says, look, Reg, they may be mid-major by name, but they do not have mid-major talent. No, no question about it. These guys are for real. And Andy Enfield's done a terrific job of allowing them to be themselves. Franklin the other way. Laredell was defending. Franklin just hit that three. It's deflected by Murray in the other way. Comer. Now, if Comer was going to throw it down. <laughs> you would have thrown in the towel then, right? I was going to say. Beautiful outside shot going in from three with under a minute to play. Saw Georgetown do this against them on Friday. Hit the threes and never say die. Verda. Feeler in the corner. Right on top. Thompson. Verda from Switzerland. His brother is here. His mother. Watch the Friday win. And you know why I say this team is for real? San Diego State, 19th in the country in field goal percentage defense, allowing only 60 points a game. Florida Gulf Coast just dropped 81 on him. It's picked up. And Franklin will put up the running three. Stevens inside. He gets the two. Nelson tournament history tonight. The Florida Gulf Coast story, this improbable story continues in their NCAA tournament debut. They're going to the Sweet 16. That's respect. Great young fella. Great, great, great. So I told you to put on the show, right? <laughs> I sure did. Nice job. Congratulations. Congratulations, Bernard. This is great. And you know what? They should celebrate like this. to it and they believe in their head coach Andy Enfield. His dad was a high school coach Andy Enfield was. He was on Wall Street a very successful entrepreneur instructional videos uh, a great college player at Johns Hopkins and he has taken that same imagination to Florida Gulf Coast. Let's go to Lewis. All right, thanks very much. Well, Coach, what do you make of being the first ever 15 seed to advance to the Sweet 16 round? Well, our goal is to make history, and we did it. We're so proud of these fellas. They, they just played so, such good defense in the second half. We didn't play great in the first half, and we had to talk at halftime. We really didn't have energy, and we came out in the second half and had the energy like we're used to. How do you explain the looseness that you guys have had on the court and the way you've played through this seemingly unfazed by the pressure? It's just personality of our players and our coaching staff. We try to, we don't take ourselves too seriously. We try to have fun, get serious when we have to, and, and, and really, uh, when you have Brett Comer and Sherwood Brown and Bernard Thompson in your backcourt, you're pretty good. You've got a trip to make. You're headed to North Texas to place the Florida Gators. 
Can you imagine they'd be even told that? Well, we, were gonna we tried to scrimmage him early in the season, preseason, <laughs> so that, now we got our shot. But no, uh, Coach Diamond is an unbelievable coach. They have one of the best programs in the country. So we're looking forward to the opportunity. Coach, congratulations and enjoy. Thank you. Kevin? Yep, time to let your hair down for Florida Gulf Coast. And here's what now it looks like in North Texas, Kansas, Michigan, Florida, Florida Gulf Coast. Congratulations, Andy. Tune into TNT and True TV now for live third round games and coming up on TBS, the much anticipated Creighton with the second leading score in college basketball against Duke. We'll send you to our studio after these messages. History in Philadelphia tonight. Sweet 16 and leading the nation in fun. Florida Gulf Coast is the first 15 seed ever to land in the Sweet 16, the lowest seed ever to make it to that final grouping. What a night for the Eagles. Lewis Johnson caught up with team spokesman, motivational speakers, and a pretty fair player himself, Sherwood Brown. Well, Sherwood, what do you make of the history that you guys have just made in the NCAA tournament? It feels great, man. I still can't believe it's actually happening right now. I mean, all I can say is that we just got, we got more games to win. We got more games to win. At one point in this game, you had collected three fouls. You were on the bench. How were you able to stay connected to what was happening? Come back out on the court, be fluid, and do what you did. You know, I just try to keep, stay positive and keep my team going. You know, uh, they, they, really, they really did really well without me being in the game. Sherwood, after the uh, game went on Friday night against Georgia Tech, you guys doused your coach with water in the locker room is mayhem. W what's going to happen tonight? Oh, he's going to get a lot of ice thrown on a lot of, probably some Gatorade. Too. <laughs> and you told me that you guys didn't have your feet back on the ground really until you got out of the court for this game. How long will you fly off this win? Well, I think I assume we're going to be flying until we land back in Fort Myers. We're going to fly a little bit there, too. And then when we get into Dallas, we're back to uh, business. And speaking of being in the Sweet 16, you'll face, face Florida. What are your thoughts on that? It's, I know it's early, but that's what everybody will be talking about across the country. Well, you know, I never played against Florida before. I've seen them play quite a bit. I understand that they're a really good team, but we're going to go out there and fight and do, do what we do best. Sherwood, heck of a tournament. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank right. you. have bought what Andy Enfield is selling <laughs> in Fort Myers, Florida. Wow, what a great night for Gulf Coast, uh, Florida Gulf Coast University again. The good news for Andy is uh, because this is an NCAA tournament event, the uh, suit will be a lot easier to dry clean because that's just going to be water. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's like, uh, like they just won a national championship and from where they've come from six years as a Division right. I program, they might as well have. They made history tonight. Amazing. <laughs> It, it, it is amazing. I mean, this is a team. They didn't dominate the Atlantic Sun. I mean, they're beating Georgetown. They're beating San Diego State. Uh, uh, Lipscomb beat them twice this year, to, to give you an idea. So they're on a roll. They're making plays. They're confident. As you say, they're believing in what Andy's saying. There's no question about it. And it's, it's unbelievable what they've done. 15 seed getting to this uh, Sweet 16. What a story. You're right, Coach. Um, they didn't win a lot of games in their conference, but I think their non-conference scheduling has definitely helped them. Andy's confidence in his team. And then they have real talented basketball players that can make plays. They're not lacking confidence, and then they play bigger than what they are. They play a, 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 a skill set that, hey, they have a lot of guys that can make plays. They're going to spread you out. But I'm impressed defensively that they can overcome some of their size. 
Sherwood Brown rebounds the basketball at a high rate, only being 6-4. They're fun to watch. And even when things, when you start to get tight, that point of the game was about five minutes left, like, can we do this? Not phased. Not at all. They start getting the quacking going. Yeah, and they the, keep going. whatever that is. They have that. joy. <laughs> I, I need me one of those T-shirts. Yeah, I don't know if Eagles are quacking, but they're certainly flying high. And, you know, if, if this team in either the Georgetown game or tonight had stopped for a second to think about what was happening, to think about the situation and the history that they were on the verge of making, I think they may have had a hard time converting. The style that Andy Enfield teaches is conducive to not thinking and just playing and having a good time.